The Believer's Walk of Faith is paid for by Bill Winston Ministries partners and viewers. See, God's got an answer for every problem you've got. The problem is, is that we got to live by what? Faith. We got to come up on the faith realm. And when you pray in the Holy Ghost, watch this. Thank you, Lord. I believe I received that. Man, you don't even know what you received. And then the next thing you know, God starts quickening to your mind because you, you're going to draw it up out of your inside. See, he loaded it inside. Come on, y'all. Go with me to Mark chapter four, verse 35. I'm making it so that you're going to win every battle. You will not, I'm telling you, people talking, well, I don't do that tongue stuff and so forth. We don't like that over here. Okay, fine. Then wait, let me see you reach your destiny. <laughs> see, crossing the, the, the Red Sea was a type of water baptism, but crossing Jordan was a type of spiritual baptism. That's baptism in the Holy Ghost. You need the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. And so Paul said, I pray in the spirit more than you all. No wonder he was so victorious. All right. Now, now look at this. Look at this. So here they go to the other side. Jesus got some orders from God. And the same day when evening was come, he said to them, let's pass over to the other side. Watch this. And when they had sent away the multitude, they took him even as he was in the ship and there was also with him other little ships. Now, even as he was, underline that. And there arose a great storm of wind and the waves beat into the ship, so it was now what? Full. Got it? And he was in the hinder part of the ship asleep on a pillow and they awake him and said to him, Master, care it not that we're about to die. And this is what they said. All right. Now, isn't this interesting? They took him even as he was. Now, what did I tell you when I give you the word? What is your job next for the, to, to take that word and meditate? Didn't I say that? Because I got to take it from information, come on, to revelation. And revelation brings faith. Information, you'll get a man's kind of faith. Revelation, you'll get God's kind of faith. And I got to take this word and I've got to meditate it so that it drops from my head down to my heart. And at the same time, renewing my mind. So here comes the water in the vessel. Water represents out in the sea, represents the world. The world's thinking comes right in our minds. And next thing you know, we're trying to solve this problem by getting buckets and dumping this water out. And you're not going to beat Satan at his game. He, he, he's ready for you to try to whip him without faith. See, if, if nothing, push what you got, push it in faith. See, when, when we were starting the Joseph Business School, they came to me, Dolores and Ray came to me. They had two MBAs from top university. I said, okay, go away and come back and tell me how long it'll take to start this kind of school. Business school, Christians, Bible-based, so forth. Came back, said, take one to two years. I said, oh, let me pray about that. I prayed about it. God said, tell them to take two months. Now, listen, because they were obedient, they went out based on my word. Like Jesus said, his mother said, whatever he says to you, just do it. Why? Because I'd gotten the word from God. What is he trying to do? He's trying to take it out of time. Because as long as it's in time, it's going to be in that place where the God of this world is going to fool with it. And I got to take it out of time. Whatever time it takes, that ain't going to be my time. I, I've got to take this, this house mortgage, paying it off. I got to take it out of 30 years. I got to put it back up in 30 days. I got to put it in three years. You follow what I'm saying? I got to put it where faith can go to work. 
because as long as I keep it down here in this natural realm, them waves are going to beat into that ship. And next thing, 30 years become 40 years. And you done pay for that house 15 times before you get it paid off. No, 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 no. God's got a better way to do it. It's called moving from the natural to the supernatural. Now, when you get it in your spirit, you're training your spirit differently. You're training your natural mind differently. Be not conformed to this world, Romans chapter 12, verse two, but be ye transformed, come on, by the renewing of your mind. So I've got to renew, renew my mind to the fact that time was given by God to keep order in the world. And that now I have dominion over everything God put in this earth, over the works of his hands, I've got dominion over it. So I'm gonna take dominion over this time because that's gonna take too long to heal. I want it healed by in the morning. I want, are you following what I'm saying? Now, if I believe that, then my spirit can release the forces that come through my believing and line my body up with what I believe. Say amen to that. Amen. Folks, increase in your finances doesn't come by time, it comes by truth. Say amen. Now the reason why is where is your increase? increase is not linear. Your increase is not out here in time. Your increase has, he's already made you rich and it's vertical. It's like, well, hello, boy, I'm getting off into something here now. Look what he says in second Peter. Oh, it's a God. I'm still going to do these, 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 uh, <laughs> I'm still going to do, y'all getting into stuff I like to get into now, man. It, it, you know, we're going into spiritology. You know what I mean? This is class here now. Praise God. Look what he says in, um, in 2 Peter and chapter, um, oh, chapter 3 and verse 8. But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years. Glory to God. And a thousand years, come on, as one day. Now, what is he saying? He's saying, I don't care whether you're dealing with a thousand years or a day. in the level that he lives at in eternity is where you came from. And your eternity is in your heart. And what you have to do is not let your body and your unrenewed mind dictate to you what eternity has already done. See, next thing you know, we're trying to work it out, trying to slave for it, so forth and so on. Listen, it's an inheritance and I won't mind now. She came here and said, hey, there are people sitting up here and, and, and you some of you sitting up here, you said one had an aspiration to be a millionaire. He said, but God says, am I not able to make billionaires? When he said that, that means somebody in here in the newspaper of heaven, it says that you are a billionaire. Yeah. 
Now, now, come on now. God is, see, <laughs> see, she is prophetically saying what's already written. That's what the gospel is. It's about what's already done. It's not about what God's going to do. Whatever he's going to do for you, he's already done. He's seated, seated, waiting on you to take and possess what he's given you. And the step that you're going to make is going to be a step of faith. Because the moment you start across that seat, going to the other side, here comes the devil. And he's trying to tempt you and make you think that this will not work. But Abraham, notice what he did. He, 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 he stumbled not, whatever it says, about the promises of God through unbelief. But he was strong in faith. See, he considered not his body. He considered not Sarah didn't have a baby. Don't consider that. That'll bring doubt to your life. What you need to consider is keep your eye on the prize. Keep it focused. Keep saying it every morning. Keep decreeing it every night and so forth. Listen, God... You don't need to tell God what's wrong. When the anointing comes, it fixes everything that's wrong. It doesn't make any difference. Well, you know, my grandmother had this and it passed down. God will fix your genes. Well, you know, I'm allergic to that. He'll fix your allergies. Well, you know, it doesn't make any difference. The woman didn't have to tell Jesus anything that was causing her issue of blood. I don't know what it was. It could have been a blood disorder. It could have been some kind of organ that was wrong. It could have been that, but it didn't make any difference what it was. When the anointing comes, it's going to line up everything with Adam. You hear what I'm saying? And reasoning and, and, and human logic will try to get you to explain why this. God doesn't want no explanation. The most he asked one man is how long this has been with the boy. He said, well, since birth. He said, well, I'm kind of, he's going he's gonna to straighten up right now. That's faith. The walk of faith. I don't need to know a whole your history. People come in there. I used to do when I, I was doing, you know, marriage counseling. I don't do it no more. Uh, but when I was doing it, I got Pastor Frazier and, 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 uh, and, and them to do. do but, but I'm just saying, when I was doing it, come in there and they tell me their story. Now, that didn't took about 45 minutes. And then I say, okay, well, what's your side and so forth? And God tell me one time, what you doing? I said, well, I'm trying to counsel these people. He said, no, he said, listen, just ask me what I, you need to tell them. And he said, when you tell them that, watch this, and release it with confidence, the anointing will come and break the yoke that's causing it in their lives. You don't even need to know what it is. When that anointing comes on you, the yoke is destroyed and people wake up the next morning wondering what they've been fussing about for 20 years. Yes, sir. Say amen to that. All right, let me just give you this. Are y'all following what I'm saying? I don't mean to get all loud and everything, but, but sometimes you got to get excited here. They let the man down through the roof. Didn't they let the man, the man, they couldn't get in through the normal door because there's too many spectators. You know, they blocking the door, trying to catch him in his words and all their, their horses and mules tied up out there with mud flaps and everything on them. And, and so they come up on the roof and they tore it open and let the man down. It didn't interrupt Jesus at all. Jesus said, son, thy sins be forgiven thee. Now, what was he saying here? They said, nobody can forgive forgive sins, but God only. Jesus didn't ask the man what he was into and nothing. And then he said, hey, rise, take up your bed and walk. He didn't say how long you had this, how much, it doesn't make any difference because that will draw you down into the natural. You don't need to know that. All you need to know is I said, this school will start in two months. All you need to know is I said you can be a millionaire by February the 21st. That's all you need to know, man. You don't need to know how am I going to do this? How am I going to? I don't have enough education. Don't even consider it. Oh, it's a God. Consider not anything but the word that the prophet spoke. Man, we can do this thing. But your job is to chew on it, to, to mix it, to transfer it. Because what you see by revelation is what God delivers. 
And you're going to see that. And I'm just, well, some people think he's just talking about money. Don't pay attention to that. We're trying to do something with Chicago. We're out to eradicate poverty in this city. All of it. Toward to God. All right, here, here's the last thing I'm going to give you. Woo-wee! Boy, you see how the violent have to take it? Say, you're going to have a little violence about you. I'm not talking about go buy a gun, gun, knife or something. I'm talking about faith. You're going to have that kind of faith that takes, not the faith that waits. Say amen. amen. Say, that's the kind of faith I've got. Amen. Say it loud. That's the kind of faith I've got. Amen. You can tell when it's about to come because you go to a rest. Yes. You feel like, hey, well, this is, this is done, huh? I feel good about this. You get up in the morning, you don't argue no more or nothing like that. You just, hey, praise God, I feel good. That's because the battle has shifted. Yeah. And you about to take everything that the devil ever stole from you. Yeah. All right, the first one, a roadblock is unbelief. Say unbelief. unbelief. And they fail to get into the promised land mainly because of their unbelief. And this unbelief is something that can, has, has stopped many people because when they start moving forward and getting the things of God, next thing you know, the devil comes in, we're building them all. Next thing you know, the man came in because when the money stopped, all equipment and stuff left and so forth, that, that, that was the devil, he was holding it up. And the man came to me, one of the contracts from downtown, he said, you know, Reverend, I'm a Christian too. And there's a scripture here that says, um, no man builds a house without first counting the cost. Now I'm getting convicted like I don't know what, cause I don't have any revelation of that scripture. He ain't talking about money, he's talking about faith. <laughs> okay, next one, doubt, doubt. That's Matthew chapter 14, verse 28 through 31. What did Peter do? He is in the boat, Jesus coming along. What is Jesus doing? Walking on water. They said, hey, Peter said, if it be you, bid me to come to you on the water. He said, well, come. it's the will of God. I said it's the will of God for you to walk on water. Glory to God. So he started walking and took his eyes off of Jesus and beginning to sink. He said, Lord, save me. And Jesus picked him up. So you're going to have to hold fast to your confession. Say amen to that. Once you get on it, stay on it. The next thing happened. Uh, the next thing is uh, number three. Number three is uh, fear, fear. Job said, Job 3, 25, the things which I greatly feared has what? Come upon me. So notice how fear attracts what you don't want. Fear attracts what you don't want. So, so the God's, uh, the enemy's plan is to try to put fear inside of you. If Jesus hadn't raised up out of that ship, it would have been a a, a, a box of meat in the morning. I mean, they, 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 that was going to be the last you heard of them. But Jesus said, wait a minute, what the enemy, he said, where's your faith? What did the devil do with those incidents? He tries to steal your faith. So you're going to have to maintain faith. Say maintain faith. 
So Timothy, 2 Timothy 1, 7, God has not given us a spirit of what? Fear, but of what? Power, love, and of what? Sound mind. So whatever you fear becomes your master. Look what it says in, in, in number four is condemnation. Now this is a slick one. This is a slick one. When you moving into big things, whether it be money or, or big companies, positions, so forth, the next thing that that enemy will try to do is try to get you condemned because he knows a condemned mind cannot develop faith. It cannot develop faith. And so what happened is this prodigal son came back home and next thing you know, his brother tried to condemn him, told his father that he'd been living with prostitutes and sleeping with hogs. And next thing you know, uh, his father said, son, come on in. And you, you, all that I have is yours too, but he wouldn't come in. And a condemned mind is a, is a terrible thing. It's try to condemn other people. You, your job is to lift people. I said, your job is to lift people, even your children. All right. So let me just give you this and we're gone. This last thing is creative faith and dominating faiths. Creative faith is what God has. That's part of your God kind of faith. It will create things. Say create. create. Next is dominating faith. That's faith that stops storms. It'll stop a storm. Creative faith will create new laws. It'll create new body parts. The next kind of faith is religious faith. You know, you can hear the sound, religion got a sound to it. I don't know whether you, it's got a sound to it. Got a smell to it too, but it's got a big sound to it. And when people are singing or preaching, I can tell if it's religion. I said, Lord have mercy, turn that off. And, and religion, <laughs> religion, it, it, it's, 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 <laughs> It, 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 it really does not exalt the Lord. It, it usually I'm climbing up the rough side of the mountain. See, it's all me. It's all me. God, God, my tie just crooked. My God, I don't preach my tie crooked. I had preached my tie crooked. I'm telling you. And, 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 and look here, God, God says, come before him with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. I remember religion had me, I was, I was trying to get a message. We had just started a church when I was still with, we were still with IBM in Minnesota. We had just started a little church, so forth, trying to, I'm trying to get a message Saturday night. I'm, I'm that 12 o'clock at night. I'm trying to get something, nothing would come. And I, I good Lord. And I started crying. You know, people, People need, they need, Lord. They're, they're. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking I'm impressing God. And, and, and a voice rang out. What are you doing? I knew I was in trouble, boy. I, I didn't, I, I said, huh? What are you doing? I said, well, I'm trying to get a word. He said, is that the way you come before me? See that? In the morning, first thing you should do to get in your devotion time is lift your hands and start praising God. The first, see, you're trying, people are trying to break the protocol and you can't do it and get the power. You're going to do it just like this book says. There is no place that you got a king in a kingdom, a, a, a sovereign kingdom. You cannot get a king and come in there looking sad. That's why, who was that that came before the king? Nehemiah. And he looked sad. Listen, he took a chance. Because in the king's mind, looking sad before him is disrespect. His disrespect. I come out here, the first thing I should do is praise God. Give him praise. Thank him. Thank him for being alive. Thank him for being my king. Thank him for being my Lord. So forth and so on. This is faith talking. This, this, come on. But religion wants attention. 
This is the God Kind of Faith, Volume 2. Now, I want to share a point that you might want to meditate on. You have dominion over everything in this earth. God gave us that. As a believer, you have that dominion. That's what Adam had at the beginning, and that's what you have right now, over everything on this earth, including time. Now, this is what a lot of people don't know. But if you look at Joshua, he stopped time. If you look at some of the other scriptures, how time was controlled, see if God meant for you to be subject to time, he never would have given you faith because faith is always now. Glory to God, you got to get this teaching. <laughs> well, until next time, this is Bill Winston saying, we love you and keep walking by faith. Now remember, you need faith to get to your destiny. So don't forget to subscribe and click on the notification bell so that you don't miss any of our videos. This is Bill Winston. I love you.